Hi, I'm Liz from Arca Space, and on this week's episode, we'll be going more in depth on the propellant tank for the Demonstrator 3. The propellant tank for the Demonstrator 3 rocket is the most difficult component to fabricate. It requires high precision. This is necessary because the tank operates at high pressure and it needs to have a lightweight structure. At this point, Arca is fabricating probably the lightest propellant tanks in the world. The propellant tanks for both Demonstrator 3 and Haas 2CA rockets are using the same fabrication technology as both of them are working at 20 atmospheres of internal pressure. Because of the lightweight structure of the propellant tanks, we were able to replace the turbo pump system with a pressure-fed system, dramatically decreasing the cost of the Haas 2CA single stage to orbit rocket. The first actual piece for the right. Right now, Cosmin is working on the uh, lip in order to join both tanks together. Once everything is together, we'll be able to rivet both ends together and then uh, proceed to make the positive mold for the fuel tanks. This tank will be filled with high concentration hydrogen peroxide, which will be used as a monopropellant for the Demonstrator 3 rocket engine. This propellant burns at 250 degrees Celsius, which may sound hot, but this rocket's operating temperature will actually be 10 times colder than any other rocket to have reached space before. And the only byproducts of this propellant are oxygen and water, which means it will be one of the most environmentally friendly of its kind. So, uh, Michael and I, we are talking about the avionic system for the Demonstrator 3 rocket. Uh, we are going to have four cameras on board that are going to allow us to see how the jet is uh, performing during the flight, uh, in the case of the Aerospike engine. Uh, we are going to have also on board the satellite tracker that uh, is going to provide us with uh, telemetry data during the flight of the rocket but also um, while the rocket is on the ground after the flight in order to allow us to easily identify the rocket and recover it. Uh, and uh, we are also going to have uh, five temperature sensors on board, one in the propellant tank, one uh, on the engine um, skin on the outside of the engine, uh, another one in the chamber of the tank, another one, the second one in the chamber of the tank, and uh, the fifth one um, in the jet stream on the ramp of the aerospike mast. So along with temperature sensors, we're going to have three pressure sensors. One will be at the top of the tank, one will be at the bottom of the tank, and one will be in the engine chamber. Now, all of these sensors will be hooked up to our data acquisition system and the secondary data acquisition system will be in the nose of the rocket. Now, both data acquisition systems will be hooked up to their own GPS units. Uh, 
They will also be hooked up to their own inertial measurement units, which we will use to gather information regarding the acceleration on all three axes, as well as the rotation among all those axes. We will also have our primary telemetry system hooked up to the primary data acquisition system so we can send the information from the rocket to our ground control station. Beside this avionics that is going to be installed on board and uh, is going to offer us uh, flight data from uh, the vehicle, we are looking to have a secondary uh, tracking system, both radar and uh, in the visible uh, spectrum uh, from uh, YSAN's uh, missile range. This is under discussions and we hope that we will be able to secure this uh, service too. That's all for this week's episode. Be sure to leave your questions in the comments section and stay tuned for next week's episode where we will learn more about the Demonstrator 3 Aerospike engine. See you next time on Flight of the Aerospike.